So it seems like we meet again, boys. I don't know why the start of the stream is offline, but it is for some reason, which means I'm going to just put me on the ticker everywhere. And then let's see where this one is going. Just need a second to sign everything, and then we're hopping directly into the game. But yeah, it's not that easy. So many tickers, and it's already 4 0. So we kind of miss half of the game at the moment, but let's see. Star Sears, group stage. Ba -ba -ba -ba, where is it? Assign stream. Yes, do. Assign stream. Online. But apparently it doesn't assign my stream. Well, I gotta check that later. Anyway, <coughs> I think we did everything. So jumping into this game, I didn't actually watch it. I watched Battle of Central Europe just before that. But at the moment, it seems like there's no Starlight Acasta from BTS. And so we're going to take the coverage here right on this channel. I hope the tickers are up. Like, I just tweeted it out loud as well. Let's see where this one is going. Either way, so actually we have to look in the draft. What did we have? Like ET Storm plus a Dazzle, a Titan as well as a Slark. And on the other side we had a Faceless Void. Who is just using that Chronosphere? So right there we go on the Storm Spirit, but he has no follow up at the moment. The X Call actually comes out on the Storm Spirit, but well, he's just turning or trying to turn this all around. There's the Ravage here. All of them are stunned, but even there, the follow up damage is missing. So Trixie now in huge trouble here. Of course, the Dazzle is in the background. There should be a Crave, but at the moment, oh, he's even out of range. So we have to see where this one is going, the Void, he still wants it, but Anchor Smash bringing him super low, a nice bash right there, but it's still not enough, 35 HP at the moment, he's surviving really on the skin of his teeth, and we have the Vengeful Spirit gone on the Storm Spirit, who's completely out of mana, but there's the Slark, no pounds used, now we have the pounds, there's the stun, but he still has his ultimate beat, he's being down to dunk number one, dunk number two, and there we got it, like Power Rangers at the moment, raising through 4C, and there's nothing the Dazzle could do. He couldn't even prevent one of the dunks there. There's even like a little blink coming out by Chisaket. Maybe he wants to go for the Dazzle as well. But at the moment it seems like they're just settling for the tower. So let's see where this one is going. As I said guys, like... <laughs> I just jumped into this game. I have to get used to the draft and everything. Um, I'm not 100% sure like what we saw and how first blood and everything happened. But at the moment we just saw that big fight in... The mid and I guess that's the best way to start into a game big fat fight while I'm still with my other mouse and other monitor busy to bring me on the tickers everywhere join Dota goes with gamers team liquid and I think I did some mistakes on the way so I'm not even sure if I'm properly ticket but I still hope some people will find the stream it's better than watching at the offline screen so let's wait let's see where this one is going at the moment the axe being here super aggressive around with the necro the necro by the way in the last fight he was not part of it so we didn't have to save the voice coming out and well, that's of course something we always want to see because it adds so much pleasure time to your fountain visit. But let's see, it seems like Power Rangers, they want to go for the tier 1 towers at the moment here. This one is already like on the third HP. We don't have a Ravage ready because it was used in mid fight just before. I don't see how they can mount the defense at the moment. Of course, the ET is trying to slow it down, but like even that stun won't do anything. The cliff being used. And of course they have some sort of counter push here on the other side of the map. But, well, this tower is still quite healthy. We have to see where this one is going. It seems like they want to go. But the axe is already creep skipping. And yeah, the tower is going down. Witch Dog actually getting the credit for it. And I have to find out anyway, what are they going for? Like, who has been farming? So this was... DTRR I think was on the safe lane, Necro, it looks like it because he has been farming, like the both supports, we have the Vengeful Spirit in the non-farming role while the Witchdog is actually trying to get, yep, the urn out and I think it's coming right now in the Cura, yeah, there's the recipe, so that's something on top of it, the Tide Hunter was in the offlane, yeah, that just looks like offlane farm at the moment and, well, he wasn't too successful for a 12 minute game, 
Let's see. Snark, obviously on the other side, he has been the safe lane farmer, but at the moment it doesn't look too good for him. I mean, look at his items. Just PTs and not much on top of it. How much gold does he have on top of this? This is 500 gold, and he's desperately trying to farm jungle at the moment, losing tons of HP, and he has to be careful. There's a Void on the way. He has a Chrono ready. He just wants to get rid of it. Big fat blue bubble waiting for members. But at the moment, yep, Valix is going back. The Slark is farming here. That's That might be dangerous because, yep, yeah, Vengeful Spirit. He should have vision on the Slark, but there's the Pounce out. No way to get him there. So at the moment, the Void not showing, just using his Midas, going full greedy. Let's have a look into these items. I mean, I hate to jump into games later on because missing all the draft and stuff like... The laning, I didn't know how the laning phase went, obviously we only have to score on the items right now, but after this mid fight, and of course the score, it says Power Rangers having a nice little advantage right here, and I think it's also late enough into the game to show the net worth right now, the top 3 farmers at the moment on Power Rangers side, the Storm actually even 1k behind the 3rd place, and the Slark, the Slark, what the hell, that Slark didn't find any farm in this game, so the laning stage for him must have been horrible, like 3.6k, and he's even trying to find, farm the Dire Jungle right now just to get something done here. And he's going for an Aquila ring. Okay, that's also something new on the start. But I guess it's a nice item, adding some damage, adding some stats. Right now, probably the best thing he can do. But let's see. I'm just checking, you know, like, do I have all my overlays on and my microphone is open? Like, I have no idea. I jumped into this cast like just half a minute time. <laughs> But it looks like it. Let's see, we have a Ravage ready, so if 4C actually wants to fight something right now, they could. But the problem is really that the damage follow-up is missing. We saw that in the mid-fight, sure, a Ravage came out, it was a 4-man Ravage, but where was the damage? The, the Storm Spirit is such, he's still working towards an Orchid, but he's far away from it. He just gets the second Oblivion stuff up, and that's pretty much about, about it. The Faceless Void, what is he going for? Going for Midas, finishing off the Mom right now. We also have a Vengeful Spirit. Around the area, he's still smoked up. They could find the ET. It would be an easy kill. There's only the Storm Spirit in the background, but it's not like the Storm Spirit can any do anything against the Chronosphere right now. So Jerax being passive, but now that he has, of course, reinforcements right behind him, he's going even a bit more aggressive. They see the faceless void, but they know he has Chronosphere, and so <laughs> Jessica is like, I, I don't care. But oh, they're stopping in. There's the Vortex holding him in place, the pounds as well, and. Well, that was a bit too overconfident, Mr. Void. Just a cat here, he really relied on his Chronosphere, but he didn't account for all that Disable coming his way. Vengeful Spirit, I think he was supposed to be the one protecting him, but he's more like, nah, I settled for that double damage rune instead. <laughs> and of course, they lose their top farmer at the moment. So definitely a nice kill for FC needed here, because their farming, you guys see it in the network, it's looking horrible at the moment. But of course, Dota is not over till your Ancient is down. And with the Slark you can still catch up a lot, as well as this Titan at the moment. Like, there is no vision by Power Rangers, so they have no idea there is a triple stack Ancients going on at the moment. Like, maybe the Necro could rotate in with the Witch Dog, for example, stun Death Ward, but I guess they would just bait out that Ravage, so it doesn't really make too much sense. And let's see, they still want to go for something here. The ET, gotta be careful. He's low mana, low HP, even though he has a... Soaring and Chisaket is just waiting to get that Chronosphere up. I mean, it's ready for about three minutes now. And let's see, I think it's coming. If he gets just a tiny bit of vision, if he knows that he is around, but uh, he's just TPing. That's probably the longest Astro Spirit return of Dota history. It's just going in there. He's casting something and now it's heading towards back to the fountain. It should cross so much on the way. He's actually scouting out two years with it till it actually <laughs> reaches the fountain. Jesus Christ, and I don't even have my Twitch chat on. Jesus Christ, where's my Twitch chat? It's not happening at the moment, but now that they do Roshan and it seems to be undetected, I actually have time to check if the ticker ring is raid. So excuse me guys for just a second, is my stream listed somewhere? Star Series, 4 Anchors, PR, no, it's not listed. Okay, so that's a bad idea. Oh, but let's see, the Axe, the Axe is already looking for something. He has a Haste Rune. And we have to see, this Lark is already waiting for something. This, this Roshan will go down, it's like less than a third HP, there's the next wave of Terra giving all that minus army. But oh, the Ravage, it's in time at the moment. The Void, however, is not getting stunned, using the Chronosphere, just securing that Aegis and look at it. The Death Ward from the High Crown at the moment, it's beautiful. And, of course, the Necro finishing it off. At the moment, it's a 1-1 trade and we have to see what else is coming. The Storm Spirit is still having enough mana, but 
he's getting stunned to death at the moment with it. Oh my god, he can't move. He can't move a single step at the moment. Those bashes are just too good. Jarax is trying to stun them here, but he has a war. Like, yeah, he has the urn on him as well. Plus the right click of the Witch Dog. In the end, Roshan secured. It went to the Void. Aegis as well. And a 3 for 1 trade. That's how we settle. And excuse me, guys, I just have to change audio settings. Uh, yeah, like this. Because when I tap out and suddenly the sound stops, that's kind of awkward for the viewers. I just had those settings before because I was in a meeting. Either way, but this fight, it didn't look good either for 4C. We have to look for the first time into the crafts here of this game. As I said, we jumped in when it was about, what, 5-6 minutes of the game already running. And Power Rangers, they had a nice advantage when it comes to experience. Now they are coming back with this fight. Gold, however, is barely moving. They are in a 5k advantage. And it has been like this for the last 10 minutes or so. Alex, oh, he wants to jump on that Vengeful Spirit at the moment. Is there any follow-up? Ah, it should be just enough. But is he getting bashed to death again? Oh, still living. Never mind the Orchid finishing it off. And the stun securing that they actually managed it out. So a nice little precision strike here. Come out by Valix. He has to go back to the fountain, however. And let's see, I mean the Elder Titan is at the moment like the only decent counter push they have. The No one else can go in, especially in 15 seconds we have the Chronosphere ready, which means the Slark, he can't show. And he's busy at the moment split pushing that top tower here, and he's even getting credit for it. So finally, some gold incoming for him. However, this is bad news. This Aghanam Scepter right now is really bad news, because Dichara, whoever he's gonna ultimate, if he's successfully ultimating someone, oh, never mind, Valix coming in, nice, beautiful stun here, just again, he has the Chronosphere, but he has to get it off, he has the Aegis, he will come back with it, so at the moment, Power Rangers, they just go on a tiny bit back, is there a Chronosphere? No, for now, he's just time-lapsing off, and we have to see, Shachlot try to find someone, but no, in the end, he's just calling on air, and of course, air doesn't hit back, doesn't produce any helixes, therefore, well, they lose that tier 2 tower, they claim the Aegis, I guess that's a, a good trade at the moment for 4FC. You can't ask for much more. Even though Jisakat, as I know him <laughs> and his aggressive playstyle, I actually thought once his Aegis is coming off, he's just going for that Chronosphere. And they're going to follow up on something. It would have been nice, especially with the Necroforce now having the Aghanim Scepter done. But no, they settled for less because Power Rangers, it seems like they're well aware of the fact they have an advantage. So going for the objective, and that's pretty much it. And let's see, where is the ticker in here on TL? Oh, I need it. Group stage, style series, group stage. Oh, I'm online, I sh it should show online, but for some reason my stream doesn't show online at the moment. I don't know why. It doesn't even matter. Some people found here, and I'm glad you guys are here. Oh, and I just saw the, the Starlight stream also went online. Well, I'm gonna cast this game to an end, for sure, and then you can uh, jump over to Starlight again. I think it's uh, Triumph of Men. Casting today for Starlighter. I guess he had technical issues just like Mount last time. 20 minutes into the game, it's 4 11. Power Rangers versus 4 FC. Thanks for all those who found on the stream. And let's see, I think Power Rangers, they want to go systematically through this game. It seems like T2 top is the next stage. They have found it already in bottom and mid lane. Mid lane, we just witnessed bottom that was a tiny bit earlier and of course we have the chronosphere ready and he's waiting for his jump hiding at the moment into the tree so whoever is showing there it might be a fast chrono balix well just faking something here and we have astro spirit fishing a bit forward they need creeps however at the moment they have to fight a lot against back to protection because the creeps are not pushing out fast enough and of course the slark the slark is putting some pressure on a tier one tower at least securing the first tier one tower around that bottom lane in mid and top it's already gone and that's his main income at the moment well he, he, he caught up a bit in farm but let's see if that's actually happening and I'm getting some steam messages da, 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 da. let's see what they're saying <laughs> someone is telling me I have to watch the Aoi stream Aoi is doing a patch view but oh, we don't have time guys we have to cast this game And let's see. It seems like Power Rangers, they were not interested in that top tower after all. Like for them, it's too much time lost. That's that's the downside. If you crew up as 5, you lose a lot of XP and potential farm, obviously, because you're not spread out. And the way 4C was just counter pushing, like they were stalling a lot of time while the Slark finds more and more farm, which is the highest risk at the moment to Power Rangers game. I mean, that Slark, he had horrible farm, but he caught up. I mean, last time we looked at him, he had an Aquila, PTs, and nothing else on top of it. Now he suddenly has a Dagger, and 2.2k 2, 2 on top of it, which means 
he's really catching up. Like, he's now almost on Valek's net worth. And never mind there. We already have a go on the ET found by Chisaket. And not even the Chronosphere used for that one. So just a freebie kill. And let's see. They want to go for more. Or do they? I mean, at the moment, Chisaket is trying to get out. There is no pounce or nothing left. No interrupt here that could possibly come out in the end. Well, this is bad news, obviously. Jessica just getting more and more farm. He's almost on 10k. The Necro, however, leading the net worth. <laughs> that's, that's quite interesting, to be honest. Seeing a Necro leading the farm, it's a very pleasant sight, especially for me as a passionate Necro player. However, we have to see 4C. Here's definitely something nice to farm. Valix is going to take care of it. And what's the next initiative by Power Rangers? There we go. A smoke is coming up. It's heading towards top. And there we have the Slark waiting. And we have the Desert. The Desert, however, is of course an easy kill. The Slark. The Slark is actually quite a hard thing to do. Do we have a swap? Jessica, uh, J4. It's not Jessica. Jesus. J4 trying to get that swap up. But even then, like, you can't really go for it. As long as there's Shadow Dance up. There's no way, just no way you can kill that Slark. You need the Chronosphere or like amazing lockdown, instant silence. But the problem is, do we have anything like that? We have a call at the moment, call and nuking him down. Then with the Necro Ultimate, that would be option number one. Option number two would be the Void, of course, with the Chronosphere. These are the two options they have to kill a Slark at the moment. And both of them were just not in range to make it. So yeah, we are back to farming. And let's see if that farming actually turns out quite well for 4FC. I mean... No, the crafts are pretty stagnant, so at the moment it's just more or less equal farm on both sides. The positioning in the network doesn't change. We have to see, no new initiatives are coming out. That smoke, that was completely whiffed, but never mind. That was fast. That was too fast to cast. That was, was a Chronosphere on Valix, and he died within like two seconds. I just had my camera there. But yeah, of course, it's a nice little change. 1.3k, 3 XP for Storm Spirit, and that's the downside of a Storm Spirit who... Well, doesn't have too much at the moment, even though he's the main farmer for 4FC. That Orchid and just one orb, there's not too much studs involved. He even had the PTs on in. But let's see, Matumba Man, he wants to go for something at the moment. But like, oh my god, look at the bashes. He has to use his ultimate. And oh, that dunk. Even with the Arcanum Scepter on that axe, this is really bad news. They want to find more, but just a get. Nope, he won't be lucky. Not slowing anyone, but Trixie. Run away, because Stitcher are just, the, just being around that aura is already doing quite a dent. Like, if you get a Death Pulse, and then if you maybe get a swap on a Magic Missile, that is already enough to kill off the Titan at the moment. So, he just can't go for Man Fight, and Anchor Smash doesn't help you too much against the aura plus the Magical Damage. So, let's see. With the Dazzle being killed, Storm Spirit just losing something, Power Rangers, what are they doing? Rashan, well, 20 seconds. The timing is, is amazing on this one, to be honest. The Necro Dichara is checking it out. 20 seconds, and this is really one of the slowest... Uh, slowest, I mean, fastest Roshan respawns I've seen in a long time. But let's see, Chisser Cat, come on. Just a bit patience, and you will see Roshan popping up, but at the moment he's going out of it. Let's see, maybe the axe on the way back checks it, because Roshan just respawned, and I just noticed, yeah, damn, I can't draw on the map. I hit I'd love to try on the map, and I hate when I can't do it. But let's see. Slark at the moment, farming next to the Witch Dog. That might actually be an easy kill. Problem is, there might be follow up. But let's see. Does he find something? That's the question. Oh, now he has vision. It's daytime as well. Does he manage to pounce? Yes, the pounce is coming here at the moment. With the ultimate, there's no way the Witch Dog can do anything. But the call, and he's still alive. Now the Death Ward, and look at it. Dunk incoming. And there we go. Super low HP, even though that last pounce held him in place, the dunk was just earlier, especially with the goddamn Aghanim Scepter, the threshold on it, it's just insane. And now we have to see Valix, oh, he's trying to get out. Dichara not using the ultimate to get the interrupt on it, that might have been a kill, to be honest. Of course, it's not a Necro ultimate kill, but still, holding him in place, interrupting the TP, and then the axe jumping in on a storm that's completely um. I guess that would have been an option, but at the moment, they just settled for that slark kill. And that's... Pretty sad news. I mean, a Slark doesn't manage to kill a Witch Dog. It's really bad news for 4FC. And we have to see. Power Rangers, they're heading towards top again. That top tier 2 tower. We already seen that like 5 minutes, 6 minutes ago. They wanted to go for it, but there was just too much counter push by PR. But at the moment, we have a Chronosphere ready. And all oh, the time walk. He saw him. He saw him right here because of daytime. And he thought about it. He thought about jumping in there, getting rid of the Ravage, and we have to check buyback status at the moment. Like, well, the Titan has it, but 
Oh, he's pretty much on the edge for unreliable goal 1 6. If he dies, he's barely having the buyback. So even if they kill the power, uh, if the tight hunter right now, they could probably still just buy back and go for the ravage. But I'm not quite sure if the ravage would make too much of a difference at the moment, especially if the chronosphere catches more than one target. So let's see. For now, they just go for the tier 2 tower, settle with it, and fall back. By now they all, they also have to know that Roshan is up. I mean they checked him right on the eight minutes timer, but since this is like a super fast Roshan, they have to know that like within the next minute it, Roshan is back, guaranteed back. And I think Power Rangers they go for Roshan at some point, and then they will mount their next assault. That's at least the battle plan I can see right now. But for now maybe. <laughs> For FC, they want to do something against it. Valix, of course, with Trixie here around the area, they could have a nice fight if they're not completely outnumbered or caught in a chronosphere. But let's see, do we have a smoke? Anything coming up? There's not even a smoke, not even on the witch. Actually, the witch dog still has one smoke left. So if they want to, they can form and smoke here and try to get top, find the Slark. That might be something, but Jerax. Jerex or going back and all oh, the faces void coming in. There's the chronosphere. The dazzle is not in there, so Valix is gonna get the crave here. The question is Necro walking around. Is the ultimate coming? No, Dichara doesn't find the range on the ultimate. That's very strange. The timing would have been just perfect. So Valix, he's getting the hell out of here, but I think, yeah, oh my god, Dazzle Dunk. Never mind that. They use the dunk, which is completely off, but well, they use the ultimate of Dichara, which means we have 62 seconds on a poor Dazzle. Looking at the fountain with no chance of buying back. And let's see. I think this should secure Roshan. I mean, having the Ravage, but without the Dazzle, four men versus five men being behind in farm everywhere. There's no way they can defend this Roshan. Not to mention there's a fresh double damage on the Void. So going in there at the moment would be pure suicide. And I guess they know that. They're going to push top a tiny bit, tier 2 tower. I don't think it's, it's enough to get it. But let's see, we have some rotation already coming. No ultimate on the necro. Valix is coming. Oh, and they go into the undervengeful spear. That might be a really fast kill. Even though the mech is being used, the call actually missed on the Slark, but he doesn't have the ultimate. And look at all the damage. The, the dunk actually being off target, but it doesn't matter. The damage over time, it's still just enough. And that was even without Maledict. And let's see, we have Jarax versus Jessica at the moment here. I uh, he first tried to go on Trixie. But with the gush, just saying hello. And let's see what's coming here. There's a stun on the void, of course, but he doesn't care too much at the moment. Plus, he has the ages, a time lapse, and a stun that would even ruin the ET's day. It's not going to happen. And so, we just remain calm right now. 517, they traded a Vengeful Spirit for a Slark. Again, a trade you just don't want to do. And just trying to think of something where 4FC can come back into this game, because that's what's, I don't know, the biggest problem at the moment. We're 30 minutes in being behind that much, especially on the calls, because the funny thing is that the, the supports and everything, they have quite decent farm. I mean, the ET at the moment is on a 6k net worth and 10k only on the Slark in comparison. That's not how the distribution should go at this point. The Slark should be way, way ahead, like at least 4 5k more. He needs more items, but well, he's at least on the way to finish that Scotty. 600 gold and we have it. At least that's gonna change something when it comes to survivability. But the problem is he's still very, very vulnerable against the Void. Because Chronosphere, just one Chronosphere is absolutely enough. And you can't rely on buybacks because there's always Dichara with a Ghanim Scepter. So they're gonna take out either Valix or the Slark. Or maybe even a Titan. So like that's like the third option. Just getting rid of that Ravage and making sure he's not coming back with a buyback. At the moment they're going for High Crown. They want to finish this game. It's it's about time to be honest. Like to put some pressure here on 4 of C. They're pinned down to their base. It's not like they can split push somewhere even though Valix is trying that top at the moment on the tower. He's gonna get the the tier 2, but they're coming back. And at the moment it's really just Trixie and the ET trying to split push here and well the axe is looking for something. The Earth Splitter just saying hello to everything, but Chisaket he doesn't care. He's equipped with the Ages so he can be that ballsy without 4FC actually going in there and well there's a stun. He's getting instantly healed up. Death Poles, Urn, everything's coming out there as well as Voodoo Restoration. They have three sources of healing at the moment and yeah Chisaket back to full HP. And there's just nothing coming at the moment for 4 of C. If they wait longer, their meteor X is down. But maybe that's the plan. Maybe they're just gonna sacrifice. But never mind. They're gonna open here on Chessacat. But the call is real here on the storm. But is, there's no chrono at the moment. But the dunks are coming 
out. The Ravage at least interrupted the Death Ward, so that's happening. It's a 1-1 trade, but the problem is Void is coming back with that Aegis, and we have to see if they get more. There's the Chronosphere. They're only going to get the Dazzle and the Dunk here. Shuffle is definitely having a good time. The Slark, however, poor... Coming up with, it all, with his ultimate, but it's not like he can change anything. He's facing five people here at the moment, and we still have, well, no crazy damage. Oh, Chisicat, you gotta be careful here. New Orn, new Death Pulse, and, well, they keep him alive. They're gonna get the Meteor Rex. And there's, at the moment, nothing, absolutely nothing they can do. They can't even get Chisicat down. The Slark, no, they, they already settled for this. They're like, nope, we, we're not gonna go for anything else. Rex are down. Let's just go back. This is the fight recap, but I don't know. It's it's not quite informative because Power Rangers they went in there, nice strike, losing the H's and getting the Rex in a trade for it. So what what more can you ask for? Like they even fortify a bit their vision here, vision directly into the base. We have to see if the warning is coming right out here on the pop hill. We have a ward offensively in the jungle. So four C they're being watched at the moment. If they ever leave their base, they Power Rangers they know exactly where they are. And that's the big downside at the moment. ET, well, you gotta be careful. He has a Yule Scepter, so it shouldn't be too bad. But when the bashes, if the bashes are coming out, it's crazy. And with the, well, with the BKB, the Yule Scepter won't help you. But BKB is ending soon, but it's just enough. It's just enough damage. Like a Maelstrom and those right clicks of the Faceless Void. Easy kill, but we have to see after the BKB. Maybe they go in. Oh, there's the Gosh. And, well, the Slark is finding him at the moment. He still has a Chronosphere left, but is there any interrupt? No, the Dazzle. Nothing could interrupt him there. And even if he wanted to, he could use the Chrono just passively. I mean, by now this is a level 3 Chronosphere, so we're only dealing with 90 seconds cooldown, which is pretty much nothing. You can lean back for one and a half minutes, just keep on farming, and that's it. I love the way Shaflo is actually farming at the moment, like dunking pretty much everything that's coming his way. Well, if you farm, you might as well just farm with style. And let's see, Valix, he wants to find someone. The Necro doesn't have Arcanum Scepter, but if he doesn't silence him instantly, or if he doesn't Vortex him instantly, he's just getting hexed up, and then he will fall pretty fast victim to Death Ward plus the ultimate of the Necro. So at the moment, he can't go in there. So I don't know if he sees what's coming here, but he's completely outnumbered. It would be a 4-on-1 situation. Too many stuns facing his way. But let's see, 4C, do they want to mount an attack? They're already in the bottom lane, but there's the smoke. And it looks like they want to fight. It definitely looks like they want to fight. But the problem is they have to get the Faceless Void. Last time it was quite successful, but he had the Ages. This time, well, they found the Axe. There's the Ravage, they're coming in, but they didn't find the Void. So the Void is coming in here. Where's the Chronosphere? Actually, Chronosphere holding up his team. Plus, of course, two of 4C. The Death Ward, however, still doing tons of damage. There's the Dunk. The Dunk actually not coming on the... On the one who had the crave, but Valix, he's trying to get out here, but he's even... Oh my god, like no mana, no nothing left. Void is gonna get him. It's a two for two trade at the moment. It's it's quite okay-ish what they did here. I'm surprised they, they found those kills for 4 of C. Still, both cores on 4 of C have been lost only for support and the farm and Necro. Well, the Necro is coming back in 40 seconds with the ultimate and everything and one and a half minutes telling some time. That just shouldn't be a problem. They can just stick around here in that bottom lane. Do we have BUTs on him? No, he's still having on Tranquils. But in theory... Oh, never mind. I actually thought we might see something. The call actually of the X was completely off target at the moment. Trixie, nope, they're not really finding anything. And let's see, Valex, they want to come in. Oh, beautiful damage here, Trixie. They already found one, two. The question is, do they have more? Any interrupt? Yes, the Yule stuff to come out. Jarax making sure, and that's done. This really hurts. This really hurts. Those three being lost. That's quite something. Like I think that was a mega kill on the axe and the dominating on the faceless void. Ouch, ouch, ouch. I mean, experience will definitely shift. Maybe even see 8.9k swap here. And in gold it's like, well, a difference of almost 6k. That was definitely a nice trade. Finally 4FC find a trade that favors them. Even though it was pretty much a defense right on the base. And power ranges, I guess they were just a bit too overconfident. Well, Roshan... Well, in less than a minute we know what's the exact time on Roshan. But yeah, this is what 4 say need. Right now they've already been on a, like a 15k experience. This advantage is same pretty much with the goal. This trade gives them at least a bit hope. It's not a turnaround, it's not a comeback. That's too early to call it that. But at least it gives them hope. And hope is what they need at the moment. If the Slark, the question is what is he going for? I, I, I would say Basher Abyssal Plate. 
because he needs something to lock down the Void, especially if, because the Void has now a BKB, so he's immune to the Ravage if he wants to, if he sees the Ravage coming, if he sees Trixie plinking in. So that Basher Abyssal Plate, it has to come, get the Void up and just make sure he doesn't get the Chronosphere off. Somehow they have to get rid of this Chronosphere, that's like the biggest variable in this equation that, that pretty much destroys 4FC's game at the moment. Everything is based on that Chronosphere. If the Chronosphere is taken out, then I'm pretty sure they have a, a chance to fight, even though there's tons of farmed heroes waiting on the other side. But let's see, for now, we have to look into Roshan, and the timer is relatively short, just an additional minute. But of course, for FC, they know something is going on. They know either Power Rangers is looking for a kill somewhere in the smoke, or they're going for Roshan. They don't have direct vision on it except for this ward here, so why not go in and put some pressure on the map at the moment? Well, they gotta be pretty careful because. <laughs> Nobody knows really where the other team is, so why not just continue and putting here T3 pressure up. There's still a cliff if they wanted to. But the Slark, do we have a Chronosphere? Chronosphere coming in. There it is, they found the Slark. Is it enough damage? The Yule's have to buy quite something, but the call, the call should be there. And, well, the ultimate, he is out for a hundred. Jesus Christ, a hundred seconds and no way of buying back. Oh my goodness. So, right now, Power Rangers, if there was ever a good time to push, or just take safely a Roshan because the core is down for yeah, almost two minutes. Then it's now. Oh, but we have to see. Valex, he gotta be careful. He might be hexed up right here. He's just going for the silence on the Vengeful, losing all of his mana for this assault. In the end, he has to go back because the entire team is rolling like a truck behind that Necro and that Vengeful Spirit. And it didn't even tickle. It didn't even tickle like all the Voodoo Restoration and Orns and whatnot. It's just counter healing everything at the moment. So. Oh well. And yes, mods are asleep. Like, this is just a, a short notice cast because Starladder was offline. So there are no mods, no nothing at the moment set up on the channel. I'm trying to have an eye on it, but then again, it's a solo cast. So I don't have any other guy talking where I could just have, I don't know, look at something else. But oh, Valex is coming in. Beautiful Ravage at the moment, but oh my god, second Ravage here. Can they lock down the Faceless Void? Still waiting for that Chronosphere, but... Beautiful town here. The axe actually not making his dunk successful here in the end. He's gonna survive, but the Chronosphere, he still finds Valix. That should be enough for a kill. And also the Titan, the cooldown on this dunk is so low. They're gonna find this kill as well. In the background, we have the ET. I don't know what he went for. He's trying to get the stun off, but the bash. Second hit bash here by Chisukat, and that's four down. The Slark being doomed to just watch what's happening to his team. In 10 seconds, he is back, but. I think the damage is already done. Do we have any buybacks? Valix, buyback. That could maybe change something, but he already has cooldown on it. Like, this is this is not going anywhere. This, this Meteorex will be down. The question is, Power Rangers confident enough, go on top and finish it right off here, or go on back, get Roshan, farm some more, and then come for the last set of wrecks. That's the big question. That's the only question we have right now, and I think we just got it answered. They go for the third set of wrecks, and, well... The ET has a buyback if they want to. And to be honest, they have to use it. They have to use it. Oh, the pounds into pretty much everyone here. There's the call, and this is really bad news. Where's the stuns are coming? The stuns are not really coming. We still have another Chronosphere left here, and that's pretty much it. Even though, well, that's done. Buying some nice time here, but the swap war from back. They're all getting nice damage by the Earth Splitter, but the Stark, he's out for another 100 seconds. Like, Really, really bad game for 4FC. I saw them better in the last performance. There is another Chronosphere here, the Yule Sept being the setup, but the GG is coming faster out than I can say GG. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed the cast. Starladder is online again, so go there. Triumph of Ment is casting. I don't know what they had, technical issues whatsoever, but thanks for joining in. And enjoy the other games then by Beyond the Summit, Starladder, or whatever you want to call it. See ya, guys.